All right, uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are dialing in from. We are going to get started in just one minute. I'd just like to give folks a few more seconds to file in and then we will get started. All right, once again, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Jake Damari, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Sales at Accenium. I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. I am incredibly excited for today's event because we're joined by my colleague, Jeff Chung, and Jeff Russell from the Globus family of brands. If you don't know, Globus is the world's largest tour operator. Today, we're going to explore how they, tra they are transforming their global content operations product information management, and digital asset management. Like many organizations, Globus's legacy digital asset and product information management solutions had grown expensive to maintain, lacked modern functionality, and suffered from performance issues. These problems made it challenging to find and reuse content assets and negatively impacted the customer experience and productivity while driving up costs. Today, we're gonna look at how Globus, with the help of Accenium and Sitecore, are solving these problems and modernizing their global content operation with Content Hub. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters, Jeff Chung and Jeff Russell from the Globus family of brands. Thanks, Jake. Hello. Thanks everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, as Jake mentioned, we're we're uh, excited to uh, share our experiences and how we uh, worked with uh, Globus Family Brands to really create a global solution. So before we jump into uh, kind of details, uh, just a little bit of background about ourselves, uh, just a quick intro. Um, and so I'd like to introduce um, uh, Jeff Russell, uh, who has been a fantastic partner. And so Jeff, if you don't mind, just do a quick intro uh, to everybody, that would be great. Hi, thanks so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. It's like the the Jeff and Jeff show here. Um, so we uh, we're excited to be able to talk uh, a little bit about the project that we've been uh, embarking on for the last uh, 14 months during the crazy travel uh, time period that we've been in. So I've uh, been working in the in the marketing field for the last uh, almost 25 years and have been in lots of different sectors, but the the most fun sector has been the travel industry. Um, obviously, the most fun product to sell uh, is selling people's uh, dreams uh, to travel around the world. So I oversee all of the uh, um, marketing, digital marketing efforts for all four of our travel brands. And I'll talk to you a little bit, a little bit more about that, um, but also responsible for all of our uh, website infrastructure, both in the United States, um, as well as for all of our international offices uh, around the world. So that's kind of a quick overview for myself. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and uh, my name is uh, Jeff Chung. I'm VP of Client Services uh, here located in the South uh, Territories. Um, I have been in the industry for a little over 20 years or so, um, mainly around the digital space, uh, working on uh, both the, the, the marketing aspect and also the delivery side of things. Um, I have over nine years experience working with different uh, Sitecore technologies. Um, last year, really focusing on the digital strategy of, uh, side of things, so it's kind of exciting there. Um, and also um, with our launch of our new Sitecore practice, I lead that as well. So, um, but there's just a quick view of who we are. Um, and and so let's take a quick quick look on, you know, what we're gonna cover today. So um, we're not gonna spend too much time, you know, in terms of like who Accentium is, so we'll try to stay just a very brief flyby there, um, as well as, you know, give a little information, a uh, little bit more information about Globus. Then we'll kind of go into some of the challenges uh, that uh, Globus uh, were faced with and what they were trying to do. 
Um, we'll do a little bit deeper dive into the solution of how we uh, really transform the legacy systems, uh, leveraging um, technologies of you know, Content Hub, Cycle XP, and then kind of how it all ties together, um, not only from a technology, but overall from a business process as well. And then finally, we'll wrap things up with you know, taking a look at some of the key results, the key outcomes, and what the new world uh, looks like uh, for Globus. So just real quick, who is Accentium? We are a US-based uh, full digital consulting agency. Um, we have been a Sitecore Platinum partner for several years now, um, as well as part of the Partner Advisory Board. Um, currently today, we have approximately 150 plus or so, give or take, of uh, employees and contractors. Uh, we are HQ'd in Irvine, California, but we have a national presence with you know hubs of uh, consultants everywhere. Um, in total, some of our consultants, you know, have over 20 plus years of experience. So we have a pretty uh, wa uh, wide range of experience from digital strategy, architecting, and so forth. Um, we're proud to be a Sitecore specialized, you know, content hub uh, partner um, as well. And then we also have many other specializations such as uh, commerce, Salesforce, and uh, other uh, system integrations. So for those of you who don't know who the Globus family of brands is, which I'm sure many people don't, uh, across the bottom of your screen, you'll see that the Globus family represents four travel brands. So Globus, Cosmos, Monograms, and Avalon Waterways. Um, we're a huge international company, have offices in the United States, Canada, India, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and we basically represent uh, the world's leading kind of largest tour operator. And we've got offices that uh, accommodate you know, different uh, needs from river cruising to local guides. Um, so over 5,000 professionals in the, you know, work for Globus family of brands. We have thousands of uh, different types of vacations that we sell from an escorted tour to an independent package. Um, and so 10, over 10,000 departures, you know, outside of a pandemic when people aren't traveling, uh, they can travel with us to 65 countries, uh, almost to all continents. Um, and we, basically arrange the entire trip. It's a luxury, uh, first class, sort of a, um, enriching sort of vacation, but we include, we kind of build and bundle the entire thing um, um, for the for our guest. And so, you know, when you're on vacation, we also include, you know, millions of different experiences, excursions, uh, things to do. So it's, like I said, a very fun, uh, fun place to work um, and uh, given us this chance here to, um, redo our marketing efforts digitally over the last year. So as uh, as the time came, we had made the decision to pursue a Sitecore and Content Hub relationship prior to the pandemic starting uh, back in uh, basically November of 2019. And we started this project with uh, Accentium, Sitecore, Content Hub basically in March, almost the day that the pandemic sort of started. We kind of laugh about it internally. But um, because of that, we obviously knew we had lots of things we wanted to do um, and a very big goal um, for what the company was hoping to accomplish with this project. Um, so some of the things that we wanted to accomplish, obviously, was just building this global solution you know, for all the websites. We have over 100 websites in the collective network. Um, we just started with the US-based websites initially. Um, the way we managed all of our content inside the company was very fragmented. You know, you can imagine we have lots of different departments, lots of different types of content from hotel content to excursions to all of our information about our ships. So lots of different content we had to manage. Um, and then obviously during this, you know, once we come out of this pandemic with our comeback here soon, um, really trying to improve efficiency and kind of time to market, you know, offering up our different vacations, our promotions, things of that nature. We wanted to make sure we improved upon and, and did those very fast uh, with this project. And then um, the way that the technology system worked, obviously, is this idea of aggregating all of that content um, more to an upstream approach and have it in a central location. You know, that was uh, right now we have so many different systems. And I think there's another uh, screen here that will show you sort of just we had so much um, disparate databases and people entering in content. So how did we do a better job of kind of centralizing all of that, putting all of the assets, all of the different um, things that we needed to to make sure that the content was accessible through Sitecore. 
but also in the future, you know, using that content for other uh, purposes, for communication purposes, for emails, social media. So, you know, really trying to think through uh, the content strategy was, you know, a critical part of this whole project. And then, um, you know, with the Sitecore thing, you know, reusable features and functionalities, you know, we wanted to do something that whatever we built at the global strategy could be used from other offices and then across departments. And so, you know, with Accentium, we were able to really brainstorm a lot of different ways for us to um, come up with a, a, a feature set that could be used in, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, we have lots of goals for the future with, you know, taking an anonymous user to, you know, connecting it to our CRM to then help with the personalization and brand experience and then obviously doing some email nurturing, uh, utilizing Content Hub, you know, as sort of the content um, repository for future uh, projects. And so I mentioned the challenge, you know, obviously the screenshot on your right there is, a, you know, our crazy database schema model, which, you know, you see lots of boxes and lots of lines and lots of rows of, of, uh, of, of data features that we had to aug augment. The other screenshot at the top is a, our internal um, system, uh, we call it enterprise, that has basically all of our different nodes of content, you know, and so we had to really think about how we were going to architect, you know, the overall approach. And, you know, with Accentium and with the, the foundation of Content Hub, we were able to really kind of lay out uh, the future. And so the challenge was, you know, taking all these legacy platforms, you know, and really trying to be innovative about how we were going to uh, do this without breaking, you know, what we've already have in place. We're a 90 year old company. Not that our technology is 90 years old, but for a lot of us, it feels like it's 90 years old. So uh, taking 15 years, uh, I've been with the company 15 years, and so taking a 15-year system and website and redoing it from scratch uh, was a pretty big, you know, challenge for the company, and you know, I would say pretty scary for a lot of people. Um, and then, you know, the idea of how we maintain and manage that content in all these systems with many different people, we were really trying to figure out how to streamline that. Um, we had lots of knowledge, you know, that people had, you know, and how to use the systems, which, you know, is good and bad. Um, and so we needed to figure out a way, you know, to kind of break down those silos, figure out who is going to be our, you know, primary content people from a technology standpoint, primary content people from marketing, from operations, from our product department. And really not only was this a technology project, but also a um, an overall sort of company initiative to kind of streamline a lot of things. So that was our big challenge uh, when it comes to the Content Hub world. And then obviously just rebuilding our websites from scratch, you know, connected to Content Hub um, for the last 12 months. Uh, that's what we've been working on with Accentium and Sitecore. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. And so as, as you can see, uh, the Globus team had a very ambitious goals. Um, they also had a vision of what the future uh, could be. Um, so um, as you can imagine, and you saw some of the, the slides above, um, there are many different systems, many different challenges, many different legacy rules and business processes and so forth. So it wasn't just a technology change, but it was also, as Jeff mentioned, that it's really just kind of a process change, right? So the, one of the key things I wanted to kind of call out here is it was a all-in effort, all buy-ins from all different parties, every different groups from operations, to inventory, to sales and marketing, to technology, were all brought to the table uh, to really come together and uh, solution this out. So um, with that said, um, you know, just some of the some of the key things that, you know, were covered in here um, before we get a little bit more into the kind of the architecture of it um, is that, you know, with this, we used uh, Content Hub. Uh, we used Content Hub from the CMP side, the content marketing platform, the product uh, content marketing, as well as the um, as a dam. So all those pieces together, trying to figure out how to take all these siloed systems, how do we aggregate the data into Content Hub and then create a package where it's distributable to not only their X, their Psycho XP website, but to all the different brands, to the global sites and even other downstream channels. So as you can see, it's a daunting task. There's a lot of different dependencies, a lot of different teams uh, that would have to change, you know, some of the processes there. Uh, so it took a lot of planning. So 
we're part of in a phase two, uh, you could say. Um, so it, we took a very phased approach of making sure one, we set the you know the global foundation, the solution. Uh, we set the structure uh, for everything out. Um, so we took a lot of planning, took, takes a lot of time, and then building the website aspect of it, being able to uh, create um, create a foundation where it could be easily repeatable, spin up new sites with you know less development time, but also give the power and the tools for the marketing team to maintain and manage that uh, quickly. So. Um, so just just a glimpse of the uh, architect overview here is a lot of the legacy systems um, or internal systems are aggregating the data uh, from the upstream into Content Hub. From Content Hub, we're able to take that data, uh, structure it, um, giving the marketing team, uh, uh, Globus marketing team, the ability to enrich that content to manage it, um, and also get the data input from from upstream. From there, they can. Uh, uh, update the content, have it the way, exactly where they want it to then be able to distribute to the site or site. So um, it's going to be a process, but the future goal is eventually, you know, retire all the legacy systems that are no longer needed, um, have Content Hub be the source where they can create, manage, and then update from there. So let's take a little bit deeper dive. So as you can tell, there is a ton of different data uh, within here, whether it's from ships, excursions, everything, managing it, multiple systems, multiple teams managing it could be a nightmare. So, you know, we were faced with the challenge of working with, you know, the different teams of, you know, what does the foundation look like? Um, how does the relationships there, all the business, different business roles there, are there efficiencies from, you know, um, that we can make and reducing some of the complexity there? where Content Hub came in and shined is we're able to define really complex schemas, um, but it also simplifies the use of it. Um, as you can see here, these are just, you know, just a quick view of what it looks like within here, right? And on the right screen, you can see the, the spider web of relationships, and these are all the things that are tied together. Um, so it, Content Hub enabled, you know, the Globus team to not only map the relationships, but be able to make changes across, you know, the different, um, uh, the different uh, schemas. So for example, if a, if a tour changed, but there's different products associated or scores and associated, you no longer have to go to multiple systems, right? You can update in one location and it'll propagate because of the relationships uh, tied to that. Uh, vice versa, you can go down to the individual product and then update it um, and pull you know, or create different relationships here. So what this allowed the Globus team to do is really have a single system where they can create the flexibility. They could do it with not having to go multiple system, change how the data come in or how it's managed and so forth, um, and then uh, keep it from here. So looking at how it looks from a product view, um, you know, this is a, a screenshot of how the products were managed before, as you saw earlier. Um, you know, again, there was multiple systems that they would have to jump through. They would have to go into different locations to continue to update the content, and then that would feed into the website. So, in, in addition, the, the legacy systems were also limited in some of the, you know, flexibility that the marketing team needed. Um, being able to, you know, format the content a certain way or add different things um, where Whereas, you know, Content Hub allows you to have that flexibility. Um, the other, one of the, the key things here that we notice is that, you know, when you have multiple systems that are feeding data and there's, you know, multiple uh, dependencies, you know, obviously that creates multiple points of failure, right? So it's, you make a change here, you have to remember, did it affect this? Did it change this? Why did it break this? Um, so, you know, obviously it created a lot of uh, complexity. So. In the Content Hub world, once we've set the foundation, we're able to set all the schemas, right? Um, everything became more of a single source, right? No longer did multiple teams have to go into different locations. You have one team that's kind of managing it, right? So everything is aggregated into Content Hub. Um, the marketing team additionally can add um, on the fly, if they want to, new fields, um, uh, data that they want to have additionally on top of, you know, what's going on to the website. Um, so, for example, 
you, you may get pricing information from your upstream, but you want to add maybe a, an exception to that, right? So you can create the different fields. You have the ability to quickly make those changes rather than going through a full kind of development cycle uh, for that. And then reducing the amount of integrations um, with the, again, aggregating the data, reduce the amount of, you know, siloed system, multiple systems, and also reducing the point, of, uh, multiple point of failures. So that really helped in terms of troubleshooting, narrowing things down, knowing where to go, um, and being able to have everybody kind of on the same page and understanding all the rules. So, and then finally, one of the other, you know, major benefits of Content Hub is now that they all, everything is within a single system and packaged for delivery, you have you're not just limited to your website anymore you know this data now can be easily sent to you know social to their vendors to wherever they need to go you have that ability and that can be done very quickly similar to the products the assets um, globus had multiple processes internal process of you know how they create the assets how they managed it how they were distributing it to you know the different vendors and so forth there was a lot of copy paste you know move it here store it here and it, it you know it, it created again more more work for uh the teams it also um, it also created the challenges of having duplications um, or having outdated assets. Um, so where, whereas in the Content Hub Dam, you're able to manage thousands of thousands of assets, which they are today, and this is just only a small subset of what's there to come, um, they, it reduces the duplication um, because it will notify them if, hey, here's another duplicate copy of it. They're able to go through the proper workflow processes um, they're able to search assets easier and more quickly. Um, so they, you know, depending on how you tag the content, adding the the, the metadata to it or tie it to different excursions, you can do searches and filtered facets. So it allows you to go take a look at excursion and say, oh, here are all the assets available that we want to use for maybe this marketing material or a specific campaign they're trying to push. That all is tied into one location. And the best part about it is, you can have a single asset for all of those multiple sources. You no longer need to create 10 versions of something and you know, and have a file name of, this is for email, this is for this. Um, we've established multiple renditions uh, for uh, Globus where they can use it for multiple purposes, multiple purpose for your, your different breakpoints, for your different downstream uh, sources. So it really created that robust system that Globus was lacking and now it's centralized and now you know it's being propagated throughout um, and then you know hopefully for the future this would become uh, a very easy and shareable uh, um, uh, for the assets. So how did this all work and how is it connected to the real world? So um, because it's you know, uh, within the cycle ecosystem, you have Content Hub, you have XP, but because also Content Hub is API first, it really creates um, the connectivity much easier. Um, so from a, from the you know, Content Hub and Sitecore XP side of things, you know, Sitecore has uh, you know, several um, connectors, right, which enables the connections uh, between and makes it simple. Um, what you see in the first screenshot here is every asset is no longer stored within your site core site anymore. You don't have to move copy over there or the assets. And now it is fully integrated. So with a simple configuration, um, you can see that it connects to your content hub system. So you can set you know, your different collections, your different approved assets. And so it could be approved websites, but it gives you the ability to tap into content hub um, and the power of it being in a completely different you know, CMS. Uh, so it allows, uh, users to quickly uh, search the approved assets where it's been there and then select it and it can dynamically adjust based on the, the rendition they've selected per the template that you have um, and so that's that's for the the asset piece so that was you know simple easy connection and then you have the the cmp connector uh, that brings in the data into into con into uh, sitecore so as you can see on the right, you can see your different configurations and your data set, how it comes in. 
again, all this data is stored within Content Hub, managed, created, updated, and then that gets pushed into um, that get pushed into your Sitecore side of things. So the great thing is all that data is in there. The marketing team still has the ability to adjust the presentation, but all the data pieces are there. Everything is mapped accordingly. So we built the templates on the Sitecore side. We uh, set up the, the mapping of the configurations, the proper workflows where some update goes into a certain piece and then it will trigger an event. All that is there and can be managed there. So no longer does the Sitecore side have to pull or the website have to pull you know, their multiple systems and there, everything now gets fed into here. So taking a look at some of the key outcomes um, that we, you know, we wanted to highlight here is, you know, going through this process, the goal was to create the enterprise solution, um, not only from just the website, but also from the content hub, and not only from the content hub to the website, but to all the other properties that they have. Um, so we were able to accomplish an enterprise solution and the future, you know, to bring on board all the sites to make them, you know, um, be able to share the solution, share the code, reuse where we can. Um, so you know, those are some of the things that we are able to accomplish. Um, being able to centralize um, the content as well as the assets um, and being able to distribute that, um, improving the process there, right? Um, giving the marketing team more tools um, and even the, and reducing the dependency on the development team of having to create so much customization. This enabled the marketing team to really have these types of tools to be able to search, create, manage the workflows and so forth. Um, simplifying the process, right? Reducing the, 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 the dependencies of so many different teams managing it, allowing them to focus on other functions and improvement for uh, Globus as a whole. Um, we are able to do that with uh, simplifying it and aggregating things into um, into Content Hub. And then, you know, finally, um, really being able to have, you know, um, content authors to really create across all regions, right? Being able to manage, you know, and share that data was key, right? Reduce the duplication, just create that efficiencies. Uh, and so forth. And so with this, they are able to now spin up new sites, um, bring on uh, the other brand sites, being able to share code and content because all that's in place, all the data is in there. Now they just connect it and pull that data. So it has re really reduced the content life cycle there. So what does the new world look like? You know, this is again, not to uh, be a broken record, um, but from, from a you know global solution, right? They we have an enterprise solution there, right? The, uh, now it's just bringing a matter of bringing everything there. Uh, but from the overall like uh, content creation process and distribution process, that has improved. Um, everything can be done and managed within a single system. Um, you can then publish it to your multiple channels, um, and then hopefully you know with that. Um, being able to, to create content uh, on the fly and be able to put it onto your website uh, with Cycle XP, we can really drive dynamic uh, product pages, dynamic content to hopefully you know, drive more travel bookings, right? We can nurture the users um, who are coming there, capture that uh, data, and then we can measure um, and measure the campaigns um, or even the content effectiveness. Um, so, Things like that across the whole, when we look at it, it's just broader than just you know some of the technologies, but overall from a global um, entire um, business is really they transformed everything uh, from uh, from you know, going to legacy system to content creation uh, to really uh, going all in into um, investing into a technology. So it was an exciting. Uh, project uh, to work on, um, exciting challenges, um, lots of bumps in the roads that we, you know, ran into, but I think the team really was able to come together, um, you know, working again with the marketing team, IT teams, and all the different teams really bought into this. So um, we are able to really see where the, the, the next phase goes um, and um, drive, um, again, some awesome solutions.
So yeah, we're we're like Jeff was saying, we're super excited. I mean, one of the biggest decisions we made as a company during this time period is that we had we had printed and, and distributed via mail millions of brochures to consumers. And we have now made the decision to no longer print and mail brochures to customers. So obviously having a web platform, you know, is a huge, huge uh, decision for the company coming out of this time period. Um, utilizing our website as the primary marketing and communication tool to you know share all of these vacations to people um, before they're traveling and during their trip and after their trip. So we've got lots of uh, fun ideas into the future. Um, you know, we have to obviously roll this out. Um, you know, the company from a launching one website in, in, in 14 months felt like, you know, one website, that's all you got. Um, <laughs> but we also, you know, to Jeff's point, we had to redo the entire database infrastructure, content creation, all of it, you know, content hub. Um, so even though we, we launched a website uh, about a month and a half ago, um, you know, spinning up the second website for Canada in our Canadian office was very quickly done. And, you know, we'll be able to use the foundation foundation from the templates to content hub to everything else to build out all the other brand websites you know relatively quickly um, lots of future ideas with the presentation and personalization um, you know nurturing to what we want to do there um, we have our internal sort of like login to the uh, to the accounts so we have got these things called my globus my cosmos my avalon where people can log in to manage their you know their reservation they can look at the previous vacations they've booked so that's a, a thing for the future. Um, at some point, we'll decide what to do with the old legacy sims, systems completely. You know, the the uh, current um, source of truth, you know, is kind of a combination between uh, Content Hub and the legacy systems as we keep uh, retiring them. Um, we hope to use Content Hub for an authoring sort of tool where people can actually, you know, uh, collaborate and they can annotate and edit content directly into Content Hub. Um, so that way we can move uh, products through the content lifecycle a lot quicker. And then, you know, the big the big thing is that uh, taking this time during the last 12 months to really come out of this time period better than we were before. And so we're super lucky because I don't think anyone thought we could do this uh, during a normal year. So in theory, it was probably the best time in our lives to rebuild our entire IT infrastructure when we weren't having people book trips. Uh, as sad as that might be, the company invested in this technology during this time period. So we were very fortunate to get the money to go ahead with the project in the travel space. And uh, we were very lucky to find a partner with XC, uh, Xenthium, to really be our kind of like, um, you know, light, as you will, here in the photo. Because we couldn't have done it. We, we didn't have the technology infrastructure nor the people to to manage this size of a project and so uh, we felt very lucky um, and we we have lots of ideas for Accentium into the future I don't know Jeff if there's anything that you you're hoping that we'll do but uh, we know we've got <laughs> lots of ideas uh, coming down the pike into the future yeah I mean you know to to add on to that you know we're we're super excited to see um, you know where Globus is uh, going um, I know when we first started the project, there was uh, it, it seemed like a pretty daunting task, uh, pie in the sky. Um, you know, there was there were some doubts uh, throughout the project, uh, but I think you know the the having a clear vision in the beginning and really you know seeing what they wanted to do and really you know taking the time to invest in it and do it properly, um, I think really really um, paid off. Um, and led to just a successful um, foundation and a solution um, with the launch of Avalon Waterways. Uh, so excited to see. Um, we have tons of ideas, um, but you know the Globes team has great ideas and great thoughts that always keeps us on our toes. So um, excited to, you know, be partnered with them and continue our relationship there. So great. All right, this is the uh, the time that I get to come back into the conversation. Uh, Jeff and Jeff, absolutely fantastic presentation. I really enjoyed following along uh, and learning more about our partnership together and, and with Sitecore as well. Um, so we do have a, a good group of questions. We've got, a, we've got plenty of time left, so I'm gonna start going through these. Um, the first question is, are you using Content Hub Dam 
for video assets or still uh, or just imagery? And I think I would sort of expand on that to ask additionally, um, other, are there other types of assets like uh, textual content, um, uh, you name it? Sure, I, I can uh, uh, jump in here. So, uh, so yes, so the DAM is being used for all sorts of different assets, whether it's from documents to uh, image assets to video. However, um, the videos are being more for, uh, would be used more for storage, um, not for actual kind of streaming and putting onto the website. So um, in terms of the contextual, we are using um, for it and the plan for the future is to continue to expand there. Uh, but as you saw, a lot of the product information is in there um, and hopefully for the future, uh, other marketing materials and content will be uh, stored in there as well. Yeah, and our future, just I mean, short term, is to move all of our, our blog articles into Content Hub because it's a really nice way to be very, you know, modular and compartmentalized and as well as all of our press releases. So those are two up and coming projects that we plan to, you know, utilize Content Hub for, um, for when it comes to, you know, contextual type of content in addition to our product management, you know, stuff. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, the next question is, what other channels are you publishing to? Currently, we're, we're not publishing to any other channels right out of Content Hub, but we've got some stuff in the works um, through the API. We're looking to, we've got a, a large, you know, once someone books their trip, we do a series of communications after the guest, you know, prior to their vacation, but prior to the time that they step on that uh, river cruise ship. So we're gonna utilize Content Hub for that content, all that itinerary content you saw in there. Um, obviously we need to share that back to the customer as part of that communication process. So we've got um, a couple different tools that we use internally for communication. So that will be another way that we utilize all the content from Content Hub. Um, is a good example of something we're starting on. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this one, uh, next question is a little bit maybe technical in nature. Um, we're interested in Content Hub. My organization is already on Sitecore. Does it matter what version we are on? My cat first, is also joining the conversation. Apologize <laughs> if you can hear. <laughs> uh, I guess for a little bit of clarification, version of Sitecore or version of Content Hub? Um, I'm assuming it's for a Sitecore CMS. So there are, there are different compatibilities. Um, um, or sorry, different versions of uh, Sitecore Content Hub, but it, it shouldn't matter uh, which versions of Sitecore that you are on. Um, obviously, we recommend being on the latest uh, version of Sitecore uh, XP or your website, um, just so that way you can really maximize the benefits of the, the integration. But you shouldn't have any issues in terms of uh, connecting your assets or things like that within there. Um, so that's something that definitely we can further dig into, um, but you shouldn't have any issues there. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question is, hello, Jeff's great presentation. Uh, <laughs> can you talk more about how Content Hub recognizes duplicate assets? I saw on a slide uh, what looked like um, the recognition of um, multiple images that looked the same, but had different file names. Sure. So... Great question. Um, so uh, the the dam uh, that uh, uh, where where it recognizes with kind of their advanced kind of AI searching um, or capability. So even if the file is different names or so forth, um, it it will scan each of the image and it will highlight saying that this could be a duplicate. Um, that goes same for uh, contextual documents. Uh, so if you have a document in there. It does a scan of everything and that's how powerful it is. And so it's able to recognize and say and highlight, hey, this may be a duplicate and then you'll see it inside actually your, your asset management or inside the dam that will highlight what the duplicate files are, um, which is a great way to go in there and say, okay, well, this is a duplicate, let's get rid of it um, or this is not and then you can mark it as uh, different, so. Interesting. So, when when you mark something as a duplicate, does it does that automatically sort of reference the canonical version, if you will, of the image? And no, then it, just, re it just sure. It what it does is it just keeps uh, two versions of it, uh, but it notifies you there, right? So it may be, you know, it may be that it might be slightly different, um, but for the most part, 
um, is not going to kind of change the references because it's it's stored as two separate assets. Oh, okay, great. Uh, uh, Jeff Russell, could you talk a little more about the people and process challenges associated with preparing for this project and ultimately rolling out the solution? Gotcha, yeah, for sure. Um, so the way that Globus Family Branch is kind of broken down, we had a product department who is responsible for building you know, the actual vacations. They're responsible for the contracting and developing sort of the itinerary and all of the resources that kind of go into the, the actual vacation. We have, have the marketing department who is responsible for the promotion, the, you know, the messaging about those products. And then we have the IT department, which is obviously the, the, the glue in that we need a way to kind of get those two pieces and parts together. So from a process standpoint, I think we we had always been, you know, especially because we had the brochure process, was that we had a very, uh, I would say, kind of old school, you know, process of managing, you know, content that happened to live in, in a in a in an InDesign file, you know, and that was the the process to get the communication because it was the brochure. Um, that had to be printed and that, of course once you print something it's written in stone and you know and it's out there so that that process in itself of just taking what had been done for you know the last 90 years and kind of breaking those three things up into different process where now technology was going to be kind of the um, the you know the key to where the content went into for review and and then modification for a process so that was a big challenge, you know, just trying to, you know, find, um, we kind of found a key person in all three of those different areas to kind of be the spokesperson, to kind of be the trainer, communicator. And so that was a really smart idea to kind of find a key person to kind of learn the new systems to be kind of the, the conduit to all of the different, you know, process change. And, you know, over basically, I would say it took us about three to four months to really come up with a new, you know, the layout and lots and lots of meetings, lots of diagrams, lots of just um, explanation about how things are gonna, you know, potentially look and feel as we move down to managing the content in a different way, while a different team was behind the scenes working on the development and creating things. Cause I think, you know, obviously those different users have different needs as far as what it's gonna look like. And we found that really doing demos, um, doing mock-ups, uh, of how it was going to work, how it was going to look. I think those are all really important things that were, you know, challenges that, that I would say if you're about to do this yourself is to kind of start, you know, at least if it's not 100% accurate, at least put together some sort of like mock-ups of how mm -hmm. things are going to look. Because um, I think for some users, that's really important to get a visual of what, what it potentially is going to feel like and be like. Um, so, yeah, I think people, mock-ups, you know, allowing enough time to really prepare um, for us that was probably those were the three I would say those are the three key things that were kind of like important for us that I felt like we did a good job on um, to make you know to kind of get us where we are today um, we we did miss our deadline by you know a couple months not not on anyone's fault the project was just way bigger than we I think all anticipated um, so I think you know going into it we probably were like Jeff said a pie in the sky of what we wanted we also didn't want to go backwards. You know, we had a website for 15 years and we didn't want to lose feature functionality, um, which that also created a little bit of a problem building in what took 15 years, you know, into one year. I had to remind people that that was, you know, what we were doing, that everything had to be redone. So it definitely buy in from our executives and understanding the project the whole way was very important so that they, you know, also were a part of the project and not like just kind of hearing about it, you know, secondhand. Mm -hmm. I think that was an important thing that we obviously overcome during this whole process change. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, that's a great response. I think it sounds to me like you had sort of as an organization had recognized one of the uh, something that I over the over the last couple of decades I've noticed sometimes is missed, which is transformative initiatives on this scale are uh, as much about program management and expectation setting and communications as they are about acquiring a new piece of technology and and uh, sort of you know wedging it into your ecosystem. So for sure, congrats on that. Uh, okay, we've got two more questions. Um, 
Could you share a little bit about the scale of this initiative so far? Uh, specifically, how long did it take to get from the realization your legacy platform wasn't going to work until now? Yeah, I would say probably in 2018, we were we were on a you know the website structure itself was a was a technology solution that had no longer kind of been supported. Um, we were you know our database infrastructure we had migrated from an old old COBOL system to a more um, you know dynamic. We had spent about two years leading up to that 2016 to 2018. So I would say you know four years ago was kind of like the the kicking off point that we realized that we were going to have to do two things and I think the web technology you know as far as like what was out there in the space has become very very mature um, and kind of with some of the other things that have happened with like mobile first you know some initiatives you know outside of the world um, and in, and also looking at our clientele uh, most of the people who book our trips are between the ages of like 45 to 70 and their level of technology acceptance has also changed in the last five years. So I think there was like, you know, I would say five years ago was really like that was the key time that we all realized that we're going to have to make some, you know, big changes. Um, I don't know if it would have happened as fast without sort of the uh, the pandemic. You know, a lot of things have changed in, in a lot of companies um, and we were, you know, we had started this before that. So um, we, we knew we needed to do it, but this really supercharged um, us to be able to do it in the last year. Um, I think this project would probably have gone on longer, unfortunately, because we would have had our normal jobs and it would have been slower to get people to accept change. But because of the time period, we were able really to accelerate and um, move this thing along a lot quicker, um, which is super exciting um, that we were able to. And so we started the project kickoff, you know, evaluating vendors, looking at uh, implementation partners uh, in 2019, at the beginning of 2019. And we made a decision at the end of 2019 in November, kind of after our visit to the um, Sitecore conference. Um, we had, had narrowed it down to a couple implementation partners, and so we made the decision um, after kind of being able to meet um, Accentium in person um, at that conference and get some additional questions and some you know quality time with them um, before we made a decision in December. Had a kickoff meeting in January, about two months of discovery of uh, you know grooming of the user stories, the feature functionality, and then like I said, we started coding in March of last year. So that was kind of a quick timeline. Excellent, thank you. All right, last question, and uh, this is a good one. My organization is struggling with an aging MarTech stack, but it's been impossible to convince leadership that we need to invest. Can you talk more about how Globus recognized the necessity of this expense? Yeah, for Globus, I mean, this is one of the things that we did or I did as a, you know, my, I directly report to the CMO and, you know, one of our strategies was really in, in the way it worked for us is offsetting the cost and that might not work for your organization. But because of our, you know, our, med, our very large expense that we had to brochures and the printing and storing and warehousing of all of those brochures, we really had a way to offset the cost. In knowing that our analytics were really telling us that people were not using those you know printed materials and also waiting for something to arrive in your mailbox you know a week later after you're maybe thinking about going on a trip to say germany that you know we could really defend the idea of offsetting those costs so that would be one strategy that worked for us very well i don't know if it works for that person's questions or organization um because that that was like there was an instant like, well, you, you're right, you're right. And the other thing that really became apparent in the travel industry is that people want, you know, um, research online for their vacation. And what was in a printed brochure was only about 30% of the content. 70% of the content we had on the website was not something you could find anywhere else. So maps of where your hotel is, you know, things that were very interactive, 360 degree experiences of our ship. So the digital world in the way they communicate to our customers became way overwhelming to closing the sale. So I think that to me is another strategy that even if you don't have an offset cost, that if your product lends itself to analytics, research, 
that you know really putting together um, a very comprehensive approach you know presentation is what the way that i would handle it is really getting that in front of the people to make it clear that it's not about the website it's really about the marketing and the ability to you know how do you reach your customers to convert them to sales um, and then from a 360 degree marketing approach to really nurture that lifetime ca ca value customer value um, that was all part of this initial presentation that we had to get the basically the executives to fund this project going forward. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jeff Russell and Jeff Chung for your time and this, this fantastic presentation. Uh, I hope everyone got as much out of it as I did. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info at accentium.com. Uh, I know that uh, we're already planning to wrap up a recording of this event and send it to everyone that attended um, and registered. So be on the lookout for that. And, uh, you know, we would love to know more about your uh, aspirations around content information, I'm sorry, product information management, digital asset management, and content marketing um, going forward into the future. So um, if you have any other additional questions, please, please feel free to reach out. Uh, and that, that will be the it for today. I'm happy to give everyone nine minutes back and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.